Tobacco Land USA is that picturesque and historic region of the U.S. Southland where grow the milder, better tasting cigarette tobaccos, which have made the name Chesterfield synonymous with American smoking pleasure. In the heart of Tobacco Land at Durham, North Carolina, are the principal factories and warehouses of the Liggett and Myers Tobacco Company, today running at top speed to meet an enormously increased demand for Chesterfield. Throughout this generous and abundant countryside live the friendly families who raise the fine tobaccos which are used in the manufacture of Chesterfields. They are as American as the Dixie which their ancestors settled and helped with their crops to build. With so many of the young people gone to war, those left at home must work hard and long. On their farms, Tobacco Land's families can raise nearly all that they require to live well. Ration books aren't much needed. There is scarcely a farmhouse in all the countryside that hasn't a storeroom well stocked with pickles and preserves. And there are always special delicacies to be served for those times when the boys come home on leave. But the most important job for every member of the family is growing and harvesting tobacco. For example, everyone must go into the fields at topping time, when the blossoms at the top of the tobacco plant are broken off, to make sure that for the rest of the season, all the strength of the soil will go into the leaves to produce the kind of mild, ripe tobacco which is so essential a part of the Chesterfield blend. This is the time of year when Chesterfield tobacco buyers size up crops with expert judgment. Year in and year out, they make it their business to know where the choicest tobacco is coming from. Unlike other crops, tobacco isn't ripe for harvesting all at the same time. Knowing just when each leaf is ready for picking and fit for curing is one of the great secrets of raising good tobacco. Curing the leaf takes the most experience of all the processes involved in making tobacco. Unless it is done just right, a whole crop may be ruined. An average curing barn holds about 1,000 pounds of leaf, and a medium-sized farm requires several of these barns to handle its crop. In the tobacco trade, the kind of leaf grown in the vicinity of the Chesterfield factory at Durham is known as Southern Bright Tobacco, and it is cured with heat. Flu cured, they call it. The ovens in the curing barn are connected with sheet iron flues, which carry heat to every corner. Once the fires are lighted, it's a long time before anyone in the family gets back to regular hours. It takes nearly four whole days and nights to cure a single barn full of tobacco. The inside temperature must be just right every minute which means someone always has to be on watch. When curing is finished, the leaves must be sorted and graded. Even leaves from the same plant are different in size, in color, and texture. Good tobacco growers know that with Chesterfield's reputation for buying the best tobacco offered for sale, a large share of their finest leaf will be bought by the Liggett and Myers Tobacco Company. No better way has ever been found of selling tobacco than that of the open auction where, regardless of quality or grade, it is sold to the highest bidder. Chesterfield's tobacco buyers and supervisors know well in advance where the good tobacco is coming from and when it is likely to be offered for sale. Money never stops them. When they see a pile of fine Chesterfield-type tobacco, they buy it. Straight from the floor of the auction warehouse, the choice tobacco bought by Chesterfield goes to the Liggett and Myers Tobacco Company factories on its way to being made into the best cigarette money can buy. Each load is inspected on arrival by experts who have had a lifetime of experience in judging tobacco to make doubly sure that it measures up to Chesterfield standards. The tobacco grown and harvested this season will not be used in making Chesterfields until it has undergone two or more years of natural aging.
In Liggett and Meyer's warehouses, being aged to the right degree of mildness and good taste, are millions of pounds of the three famous domestic tobaccos which Chesterfield uses. Fragrant Burley from Kentucky, tasty Maryland Leaf, and the mild, full-flavored Southern Bright. No way has ever been found of duplicating the natural processes which take place in tobacco kept for two to four years under controlled ventilation. The famed Chesterfield blending process, mixing the leaf which has come from all over tobacco land into Chesterfield's right combination, begins as each hogshead arrives from the warehouse. The first step is reconditioning the leaf, preparatory to removing the stems. From a modern streamlined control board, engineers direct a new and scientifically calculated process which restores to the leaves the precise amount of moisture needed to bring their flavor to full perfection. In less than an hour, this process does for the tobacco what formerly took days and does it more surely and efficiently. Millions of leaves pass through the stemmery every hour. These machines strip away the stems leaving only the mild, mellow part of the leaf to be made into Chesterfield. This leaf, now called strip, must undergo one more conditioning before it is ready for the most important step of all, the final blending of domestic and Turkish tobaccos, which is the secret of why Chesterfield satisfied. Under government bond in Chesterfield warehouses are ample stocks of the fine Turkish tobacco. And it is the combination of this imported tobacco with Southern Bright, Kentucky Burley, and Maryland Leaf, the right combination, that gives Chesterfields their special mildness and better taste. In a series of revolving drums, the famed Chesterfield blending process is carried on until the proportion and distribution of each kind of tobacco is exactly right for no tobacco moves on to the final production line without having been perfectly blended according to the Chesterfield formula. As spinning blades shred the blended leaf, the finely cut mixture that emerges is the product of a process which began three or more years ago on the farms of tobacco land. All the care that goes into the conditioning, blending, and cross-blending of high-quality tobaccos, all the skillful handling that tobacco receives during manufacture, at last becomes evident in the final product, Chesterfields themselves. Despite wartime shortages of manpower and materials, and the growing demand for Chesterfields everywhere, there has been no compromise with the standards which insist that every Chesterfield, whether made today or two years from today, must be of the same unbeatable quality. And the Liggett and Myers Tobacco Company is proud of the fact that Chesterfields are being smoked not only by the millions of men and women working on the home front, but by millions of fighting men on every outpost and battlefront throughout the world. Whenever there are fighting men, wherever battles are raging, along with the essential weapons and ammunition which give them their fighting strength, go the few comforts which make a fighting man's life more bearable. Among these, none is more welcome than the cigarette. Every day, thousands of cases of Chesterfields leave the factory bound overseas. Come with Chesterfield for a quick visit to our fighting services on the world's fighting fronts. The United States Marine Corps, founded in 1775 by the Continental Congress, is the oldest American fighting service. Throughout all the years and in all the wars, the creed of the Marines has been attack. go with the ships of the Navy. They fight on land, on the seas, and in the air. 
In this war, in battles in the far Pacific at Wake and at Midway, U.S. Marines have written the most brilliant pages of their history. Of all the armed forces of the United States, none has more varied and exacting duties than the men of the United States Coast Guard. Founded by the Treasury Department in 1790, the U.S. Coast Guard has served the nation well and gallantly through five U.S. wars. Though by law a part of the Navy in wartime, the Coast Guard has maintained its own identity, its own high traditions of courage and bravery. Coast Guardsmen must patrol the shores and inland waterways of the United States, and their ships have escorted with distinction many a convoy through wolf packs of enemy submarines. Wherever they are serving, in the Atlantic or Pacific, the Mediterranean or in lonely barges in Tulagi Bay, Coast Guardsmen exemplify the motto of their corps, Semper Paratus, always prepared. On every ocean of the world today are the ships and men of the fighting United States Navy. And where the Navy goes, the Merchant Marine goes too. Never before in history has a fighting organization been faced with a war of such magnitude over so vast an area. And never have men accepted their responsibilities more keenly nor discharge them with more devotion, skill, and sacrifice. The Navy's officers and men are inheritors of many old and proud traditions, but the foremost one of all is the tradition of winning its battles. States Army, America's new citizen army, has already reached a strength of seven million fighting men. Behind these men in solid support are the American people, who have pledged their wealth and resources that this army shall have all the weapons and machines of war that are needed to continue its march to victory. Already the American soldier has proved that he can take his place alongside the world's ablest fighting men. In Africa, in Europe, in the Aleutians and in Asia, those American sons and fathers have imposed their will on determined and fanatical enemies. Never have men of any army fought more valorously. This army gains its strength not alone from its weapons. It is an army of the American people, and as such is an expression of the nation's might and its determination to win this war as quickly as it can. The Army Air Forces, pilots, gunners, bombardiers, and ground crews are fighting today with war's newest, most potent, most terrible weapons of attack. Flying the skyways of the world, growing in strength and power every day, the Army Air Forces are raining destruction upon the enemy. As inevitable as the dawn of tomorrow is the havoc which follows every bombing mission of the Army Air Corps. With each pounding, the enemy is weakened. With each raid and each air battle, the Army Air Forces win new honors, gain fresh fame, bring the day of final victory nearer and nearer.
Back in Tobacco Land, USA, the work of growing fine tobacco goes on. As more and more of Tobacco Land's fathers and sons and daughters leave for the services, each one at home takes on his share of still more work. The fields must be plowed again, and the new crop sown, and ways will be found to grow and harvest the same kind of finer tobacco that has given Tobacco Land its name. Today, the demand for milder, better-tasting Chesterfields has sent Liggett and Myers' factory production records to an all-time high. The makers of Chesterfield are proud of their cigarette's national reputation, proud of its universal and ever-growing popularity, and they are proudest of all that to millions of men and women in war work and in the services, both at home and abroad, Chesterfield gives what they want in a smoke, a milder, cooler, better taste that really satisfies. You can't buy a better cigarette.